These are my viewers. These are my note cards. Did you know that 60% of people consider themselves sports fans? And not only that, but 95% of people have, have or currently take part in recreational or professional level sports. So as you can tell, sports play a major role in our society today. Sports have played a major role in my life as well. Uh, from the time I was little, I've always, I've always played just about any sport you can think of, and it's taught me a lot about life and taught me what it means to be a man. Now, transgenders uh, competing is a line we just can't cross. They have a physical, biological, and cognitive advantage. Not only that, but it also damages women's self-esteem and mental health and puts their physical health and safety at, at risk as well. Dave, David Epstein, a senior writer for Sports Illustrated states, thanks in large part to testosterone, men are generally heavier and taller than women. They have longer limbs relative to their height, bigger hearts and lungs, less fat, denser bones, more oxygen carrying red blood cells, heavier skeletons that support uh, more muscle, 80% more in the upper body on average, and narrower hips that make for more efficient running and a decrease in the chance of injury. So as you can tell, all of these, all these statistics um, show that men are just, they're built more for physical activity than women. They're, they're heavier, they have more muscle in their body, and no matter how much uh, testosterone suppressors or testosterone blockers you take, your, your skeleton, uh, your bone density, no, that's not gonna change. You're still gonna be at a physical advantage over, over the females. Now, Diane Halpern, the former president of the American Psychological Association, pointed out that our brains are wired different as well. They're a sex-based organ and function differently when it comes to visual spatial skills. That's from Halpern in 2021. So men not only have a clear physical advantage, but they also have a mental advantage as well. Um, our brains are wired differently. And even after going through the surgery to become a woman, we are still just built different. Our, our brains are wired differently as well. Now, not only is it, um, not only do men have a physical advantage, but it is also damaging to women's self-esteem in addition to that. So, um, girls competing against trans athletes could face negative mental impacts. So, for example, this is Leah Thomas. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard of her. She's been in the news a lot lately. Uh, he was originally known as William Thomas, and he was ranked 462nd in men's swimming, and then after transitioning, he was ranked first in women's swimming. Slide, please. Now this is Laura Hubbard. So he was an impressive lifter from the get-go, but he was nowhere near the, inter the international level. Um, he, he won many junior national champions, uh, but he wasn't even classified in the professional uh, men's weightlifting. However, after transitioning to become Laurel Hubbard, uh, she went on to win a gold medal in the Tokyo Olympics as a female. Next slide, please. Uh, just a third example, this is C.C. Telford. So he, he was a runner and 400 meter hurdles. And in the years 2016 and 2017 respect, uh, he ran, he was ranked 200th one year, and then he was ranked 390th the following year. Now after the year 2017, he decided to transition to a female. After transitioning, she went on to win a national championship in the women's 400. So this is a graph on what women think about um, trans, uh, trans women competing in their sports. And as you can tell, 35% of people say it is right for men and women to be separated in sports, and only 6% say that it is wrong. So that is nearly six times the amount of women think that men and women should be separate than that they should be together. Just imagine how you would feel as a woman for working your entire life towards this one goal, your entire life to win a championship or to be the best you can be, and then you have someone who is biologically a man who transitions and rips that, rips that um, uh, medal, that glory away from you. It's it damages women's self-esteem. So Celine Soule, a track runner at uh, Glastonbury states, I race to win, but now that is virtually impossible in an unlevel playing field. And that's from Soule in the year 2019. She speaks of how hard it is mentally, knowing that, that first place finished, uh, the first place finisher was biologically a male. It puts her at a completely unfair level in a level that she just can't compete with. So she, she loses, um, the happiness of winning first, she loses, she could potentially lose college scholarships as well for not being able to show off her true skill set. So I'm not, trans women should be treated fairly. They should be included in everything that, um, that is fair for them to be included in. But they should be, their, them being treated fairly shouldn't come at the expense of real women being treated fairly as well. Um, 
So in addition, it puts health, physical health and safety of women at risk as well. So people who are wanting complete inclusivity, it will eventually carry over to physical sports such, a, such as boxing and wrestling. And biological men competing with cis women in these sports would be completely unfair. Uh, Niz Selfie, who works for the Department of Neurology, states she has already gone through a male puberty, thus conferring her with the mus uh, musculature and bony structure of a male. Such a combatant may have an unfair advantage over a cisgender women combatant. These sports carry an exceedingly high risk for both acute and chronic neurological injuries. Boxers have died during about or in the immediate aftermath due to traumatic brain injuries. Allowing a transgender woman to compete raises concerns for the health and safety of her cisgender woman combatant. And that's from Safety in the year 2018. The male body is more built for fighting. We're heavier, we have more muscle, we have denser skeletons. All these things, we are more uh, designed for physical combat. And when men, when men fight men, it's not an issue. But when men are, men is fighting a woman, it, it's completely unfair for that woman. And it could eventually cause uh, serious injury, uh, brain injuries, or, or even possibly death. So in conclusion, today we learned that uh, allowing trans women to compete is not right. We must treat trans women fairly, but them competing is unfair, unsafe, and detrimental to that cis women's worth. We must do our part to protect cis women's rights and allow them to be able to earn that success that they've worked so hard for without it being stripped away from them by those who have unfair advantages. Thank you for listening.